snack Me and you gonna have a little So I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is Knight of Knives. This is book number one in the Malazan Empire series. This is by Ian Esselmont who was good friends or still is good friends with Steven Erickson. Together they created the D&D world of Malazan which is where all of their books are set. The Malazan Empire is set in various different periods between Steven Erickson's books. So this book itself is a prequel to all of Steven Erickson's books but the rest of the Malazan Empire books fit in around different books of the Malazan Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson. So the two series kind of intermingle, kind of work together because they have the same characters and they just focus on different periods of the history and things like that. So let's get on to what this one is all about. This one is written in a very different style to Stephen Erickson's writing. Stephen Erickson, as some of you may know if you've read any of his books, he has this way of writing that just throws you into the action and the story, but he takes a long time to build up this massive history, the whole world. Everything has a history to it. All of the races in the world are linked. All of them have different ascendants and gods that are related to them. They have warrens and big magic that is related to certain people and certain mages. And we have the empress who is ruling. And all of this crazy stuff is going on in Malazan when the Empress is trying to take over most of the world. He creates things in massive volumes. Each of his books is about 800 or 900 or over a thousand pages, whereas this book is only 400-ish pages. And this book only focuses on two days and one night, whereas the Malazan Book of the Fallen books all focus on a long period of time where something is going on. So this is a very different writing style to Steven Erickson's. Initially it worked well for me. I thought it was fast, I thought it was fun. I thought that we got to know some interesting characters. We meet a character called Temper and we meet a character called Kiska, both of whom I didn't love but I didn't hate. I was just kind of meh with them, they were okay. I wasn't really in love with them or rooting for them but I didn't want them to die either, I didn't hate them. So I was just sort of following these characters along on their storyline and I really felt that some of the events that happened in this book were very interesting. There are some things that we learn that give us a lot more background and detail into what exactly happened with Kellenved and other people that we've met in the original series of the Malazan Book of the Fallen. So I did like it for that element, for the fact that we got to know more about the whole series. But I did feel as though because it is so fast paced and because it's very much a sort of mad dash and chase all over this city when all of this crazy stuff with warrens and magic and gods and ascendants is going on. All of this epicness and craziness is being pushed into this one night and our two characters, Temper and Kiska, are involved although they don't exactly know how so they just kind of are trying to figure out what's going on and how they kind of fit into it and whether they should be trying to stop these things or not. They're kind of unsure of exactly what's going on and because all of this stuff is squeezed into just this one night and just this one book that's a lot shorter, everything feels a little bit rushed and a little bit like we're in this big chase and we're in this big mad rush, which we kind of are, but I would have liked a little bit more development of the characters and I would have liked more development of their backstories because I feel like even having read this I still don't know the characters that well. I still don't understand who they are. I understand their intentions and I understand why they did things in this book but I don't understand who they are, how they grew up, where they came from, what their ideals are, that sort of thing. For a 400-ish page book there are a lot of 400-ish page books that can easily get you to know characters really well and this one doesn't do that unfortunately. So with that in mind, I did still enjoy the fact that we got to learn a lot more about the world and the characters and I felt like it was done well in terms of a prequel. It definitely gave us extra information. It definitely made me interested in the series again and, and made me want to read more of Erickson's books, which I don't know if that's really a good thing to say about this one because it didn't make me want to read more of Esselmont's books. It made me want to read more of Erickson's so that I could be like, oh yeah, I'm back in the world that I know and love and I've got this extra snippet from Esselmont. I have heard that Esselmont's later books are much more in the same vein as the Malazan Book of the Fallen books by Erickson, so I'm interested to give them a go, especially as they do interlink with the Erickson books later on. I know that the next one by him is called Return of the Crimson Guard, and I'm gonna be reading that in a few months' time because it fits in between some of Erickson's books, and I'm very excited about that because I know a lot of people absolutely love that one. 
So I have heard that he gets a lot better as a writer and I do think his style will probably change for his second and third and so on books. But this one just didn't work overly well for me in terms of characterization and in terms of it being a bit rushed, a bit hectic, a bit crazy. So I only gave this a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It's still an okay read but that's all it is. It wasn't anything special, it wasn't anything amazing and it definitely was not even remotely near to the same level of writing as Ericsson can produce. I feel like he has the potential and he obviously knows the world really well and knows the characters well but he just doesn't manage to bring it across as well as I would have liked so even though it was faster for me to read it and even though it was fun when I was sitting down to read it I never felt inclined to pick it up compared to some of the other books I was reading at the time and I never felt like it was the best book I was reading it always felt just kind of okay and just one that I wanted to finish in order to move on to the next Ericsson book so 2.5 stars was all I could really give it but I would love to hear your thoughts if you guys have read this and you've read the Ericsson and Esselmont books then let me know your thoughts if you've read just the Esselmont let me know your thoughts I feel like this one just was a little bit too rushed that's my main complaint is that everything felt a bit too rushed so I'd love to hear if that's what you guys think as well thank you all for watching let me know your thoughts down below and I will see you all very very soon in another video bye